Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Glittering Bell Jar. We are in Season 2, Episode 9, and we are reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince backward, chapter by chapter, episode by episode. My name is Valerie, if this is your first time here, and I am joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Brie. How you doing, Brie? Hi, Valerie. I am good. I'm doing great today. How about you? Good. Good. I'm good. I have a busy day, as always, but we're here this evening talking about Harry Potter. We are in one of the more interesting chapters in terms of... Uh, I think we're going to talk about it, but like the way that this uh, this chapter is portrayed on film and all the things that happen in it. Anyway, mm. I don't want to get into it before we get there, but I've been thinking about it all day because I just think that this is one of my favorite Daniel Radcliffe performances and I can't get that out of my head when I'm reading it. So we'll, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, 100%. You told me that a couple episodes ago and yeah, that's all I could think about while we were reading. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We've definitely like become... Over the course of doing this podcast, we've had different parts of the series and the films that we've become really like attached to. Like we talk a ton about Snape and then every so often we get on a Dan Radcliffe kick and we're just going to be like, greatest actor ever. And he's like, still got, I don't know how you could be Harry Potter and also be underrated, but I feel like people underestimate him all the time. So Dan, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, we love you. <laughs> Thanks for doing, doing the work and always making the character come to life because we appreciate that. Just the two of us, maybe some other people too. Probably a few others, maybe, but we 100% love you. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right. Okay. So as a reminder, if you are brand new, if this is your very first episode ever, you need to go back and start at episode one. It is just not going to make sense to jump in halfway through a book that we're going through backwards and we're referencing stuff and blah, blah, blah. Just trust me. You go back, go back. You got several <laughs> episodes. You can just hit play, add them all to your queue and enjoy a couple hours because we are doing shorty episodes. So they're not too long. They're not like the last season where we did a couple at a time. You can just listen to one, two, and then come back later. We'll still be here. We love you. We'll be here. Don't worry. And uh, with that, yeah, should we jump in? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So this is chapter 22, After the Burial. Hmm. Okay. So Harry, determined to retrieve the memory of Tom Riddle's conversation from Slughorn, ingests the Felix Felicius potion. Using his intuition from Felix, of course. Harry heads down to Hagrid's cabin after dusk to attend the burial of Aragon, where he happens upon Professor Slughorn. Just, just happens upon him. Tempted by retrieving some venom from Aragog, Slughorn attends the burial. After Hagrid and Professor Slughorn get drunk, Harry is able to convince Slughorn to get to be brave like Harry's mother, who Slughorn loved, and give Harry the memory. The memory, which we discussed at length last episode. Again, reminder, go back and start at episode one. Uh, and as usual, I will read the last sentence-ish of the chapter, which is how we are reading it as we go. So it reads, You're a good boy, said Professor Slughorn, tears trickling down his fat cheeks into his walrus mustache. And you've got her eyes. Just don't think too badly of me once you've seen it. And he too put his head on his arms, gave a deep sigh, and fell asleep. And woke up the next morning with a raging hangover that he totally <laughs> earned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They both did. Uh, Harry was refilling their wine like fifteen times, like fifteen wine glasses. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just think I just let's just imagine in our heads for a minute what it's like when uh, Hagrid and Slughorn wake up the next morning and they both are like asleep on Hagrid's table in the cabin, and the, you know it's like uncomfortable, <laughs> awkward, like morning after kind of like does Slughorn do a walk of shame back to the castle? Like what happens here? <laughs> Just think about it. There's a good mental image for you. Well, and they both have their clothes on. So there's that. Sorry for any kids yeah. listening. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, we don't, I don't think we say that we're for kids. We don't say we're not for kids, but we also don't say we're for kids. So yeah. kids ask your mom and dad, mom, dad, mom and dad. Why are their clothes not moms, on? Whatever you got. <laughs> Just ask them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is the chapter, obviously, that is all about the funeral of Aragog mm -hmm. and Harry using Felix to get the memory. And those two things are happening simultaneously. So unlike last episode where we kind of had two different parts, we had like the memory as Dumbledore and Harry go through it. And then we had like the discussion of the memory and what it means. Mm -hmm. This, the two important things are happening simultaneously. So do you want to kick us off with some of the notes that you have? Yeah, you know, I think the first two things I thought of the first thing, of course, is sweet Hagrid. Like he is just, he's an interesting character because he sees these kids as almost equals because he literally comes, 
and asks them to come to the funeral and break the rules, despite that he knows it's very dangerous, particularly, specifically for Harry and those two, to go, you know, out after dark. And he just loves him so much and relies on their friendship so much that he asks them anyways, like, hey, I am distraught. Will you please come and come to this funeral, even though you shouldn't? He specifically says, like, please break the rules and come be my friend. I, I know you shouldn't, but will you anyway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. Harry does. And, and you know, it's interesting because Harry doesn't, but Felix realizes that he also, you know, like, I actually, like, let's get into, like, Felix, right? Like, Felix realizes as soon as Harry takes Felix, he's like, I'm going to Hagrid's. And, every, and her, Ron and Hermione are like, what are you doing? That's not the plan. The plan is to go to talk to Slughorn. And Felix knows that it's important for Harry to be at Hagrid's, mm. not just to get the memory, but I think because that's where Harry needs to be. You know, it's all about like, he just needs to be where he needs to be according to what needs to happen. And that includes being there for Hagrid, being there at the funeral, which is such an important thing for the relationship that they have. I also think it's funny how a lot of what Harry is dreaming of happening before he starts taking Felix is what comes to pass. So he dreams of Ginny splitting up with yes. Ginny, you know, and then it happens when he takes Felix. And we've talked about that in a previous episode. So it's kind of funny that like, Felix does much more than they think it does. And we talked a couple episodes ago about, you know, do we think Snape was protecting everyone at the top of the astronomy tower or was it Felix? And I think it's Felix. Felix is clearly a very powerful Mm -hmm. potion that doesn't just affect the person who takes it. Yeah. Yeah. So specifically what you just mentioned was how Harry gets a lot of the things he wants and one of those things you said was Jenny and Dean splitting up and So if you don't know, what happens is Felix, or Felix, sorry, Harry takes the potion and they immediately go downstairs and he has the invisibility cloak on. And naturally, as we talked about in the last episode, Ron and Hermione are spotted by Lavender Brown, who (laughs) sees just the two of them coming down uh, the stairs. And Harry goes by just as Jenny and Dean are coming through the portrait. Well, he accidentally bumps into Ginny and Ginny thinks it's Dean. And this is something apparently he has done before. And she thinks it is him pushing her through the portrait, trying to help her. And she's like, dude, I can help myself. So yes, I, (laughs) I love that because he did worry. He did want to use the potion for Ginny and to break up Ginny and Dean and hope that he could then, um, you know, make out with her in front of Ron and it would be fine. But you're right. It does end up happening. (laughs) I almost feel like Felix works a little bit like that Rolling Stone song where it's like you try sometimes you don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. Ooh. Like, uh, Fe- Felix like doesn't give you what you want. It doesn't have the outcome you think you can't plan for what Felix yeah. is going to give you, but it's going to align you to get what you need, which in this case is Ginny and Dean break up, <laughs> Rod and Lavender break up. And, you know, Harry gets the memory from Slughorn and Harry's there for Hagrid when he needs him. And it's like he didn't plan that. He didn't want even necessarily want all that, but it's like. It's what Felix gives when you embrace that, that magic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Harry wanted to go be there for Hagrid where Ron and Hermione were kind of like, eh, where Harry wanted to. And Hermione's like, no, you really shouldn't. And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. But the core of Harry wanted to do it, which is that what I think the magic of Felix is, is to the core of you, what you really, what is right, what you should be doing. If you do those things, then life kind of works out. Yeah. I did love the description of the feeling of Felix too. Like it says an exhilarating sense of infinite opportunity. That is such a cool feeling. And I also love that Ron is like, yeah, it is a really good feeling. And Hermione goes, but you've never taken it. He's like, but I thought I had. And that's basically the same thing, which is a lot of proof that like mindset matters in your ability to succeed at things, even when they seem to be luck-based, just having the right mindset going into a situation can help a ton. If you go in thinking that you're not going to achieve something, you're not going to achieve it. But if you go in thinking you have infinite opportunity, you have a much better chance of getting the outcome you're looking for, even without a luck potion. Which also kind of brings up the question, what if it's always a fake potion? Ooh, what if it's a placebo? Yeah. What if it, it no, doesn't actually plain. exist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does take a lot of stewing, you know? Yeah. Could you just could, but can you placebo yourself? Generally, I don't think you can, right? Like you, ha- it has to be someone else but the, making you think. But what if you think the potion you're making is real? And what I'm saying is that potion isn't actually real. You spend six months doing mm. it and it's literally like juice. 
but you're so convinced it's something that you you think it's Felix. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's, it could be possible. I, think, I don't think it is in this in the books because like the Filch, lo- Filch leaves the front door unlocked and like a number of things work out that would not have necessarily worked out. They could have, but maybe not. And we don't know. <laughs> now yeah. you've undermined Felix entirely. <laughs> so whenever I was reading the chapter and we talked about this in the intro, all I could think about was how what like the movie versus like this scene and although they're very very similar I just I almost cheated and watched the scene because it's so good and if you guys aren't on YouTube you should get it to our YouTube because I can't do I'm not gonna do it you do it so much better whenever Harry goes down to um (laughs) I'm doing the pincer movement you can't hear that on podcast but like if you've seen the movie where where Dan Radcliffe (sighs) you know He's standing there with Slughorn and, and Hagrid talking about Aragog and there's some sort of line like he wasn't beloved by everyone and Harry goes like, yeah, it's because of the, the teeth or something. And he makes this very funny hand motion that is sort of iconic now. But I will, I will agree with you. And a part of the reason I think the scene is so good is because it's lifted right from the book. There's whole sections again where the dialogue and the series of actions that happen are exactly what's in the book, which is what I loved and we talked about with Deathly Hollows Part One. That's why it's my favorite yeah. movie. And this one is my, this one's not my favorite movie, but this is one of my favorite scenes because I don't mm-hmm. think you need to modify what's in the book sometimes. Like sometimes you just need to say the lines and do the action with it. And that is mm-hmm. enough to bring the magic to the screen. And this scene is perfect. Although I did like in the movie how they changed Slughorn to stealing. Uh, from Professor Sprout versus in the book, she mm. just says, hey, he's getting stuff for students. Now, maybe he wasn't doing, maybe it really wasn't for students. I don't know. But in the movie, we actually get him stealing, which is a little more uh, fun and in character. And more in line with his character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a great, great chapter. But I will say, you know, I didn't get as much in this one as I normally do. I think this will probably be a little bit shorter episode. Do you have anything else you want to cover? No, (laughs) I don't. That was it. Okay. Okay. Well, (laughs) hey, let's not, you know, when the show is over, don't just stand on stage making people uncomfortable, right? Like that's (laughs) that's part of showbiz. So let's call it. Let's give people a quick day. Hey, everyone. You know, we've run long a couple episodes recently. Now we're running a little short. We'll be back very soon with another episode. So let's just say. We would love to have your ratings and reviews. Grab your phone, go on over to your Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever you're listening to us on and leave us that five-star review. Leave us that feedback in your your five-star rating and review. I always say five-star review, which is not a thing. It's a rating and a review. We want both, but whichever you prefer to give us, we'll take. And uh, yeah, you can also connect with us on social media. Yep, Bell Jar Pod, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are on all the things. Come say hi. Give us a share. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Send me a message. Tell us what we tell us what we missed in this week's episode because we didn't have as much as we normally do. And you know, Bree and I can talk a lot, so we want to hear what you think of this chapter, the the burial chapter, the burial of Aragog. Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you drunk? I don't know. <laughs> That's all. What happens in this episode? I don't know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, or you can email us podcast at followthebutterflies.com. dot com. Follow the butterflies. It's a very very cool website that. Valerie created all about Harry Potter. Get all your Harry Potter needs met from, gosh, tea to things in London to the best gifts. Honestly, there's just so many. So go check it out or send us an email. Before we sign off, I want you to share this podcast with somebody who is afraid of spiders, which is like (laughs) almost everyone. So again, really large opportunity for you to share this with someone you know will be equally creeped out by me making the pincer (laughs) noise in their ears. Okay. Yeah. All right. With that, we will sign off. Thank you again for joining us. We'll be back soon. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. Yeah. Thanks for joining.